It has been a busy week of news, and this week we learned the city of Charlotte overpaid for the light rail project by nearly $2 million. Now, a new audit out there is questioning three to $6 million in payments the company managed the construction project. NHNTB, uh, NBC Charlotte's Nathan Morabito explains more about this. As passengers catch a ride on the Blue Line extension. I love it. <laughs> I do. We are now learning auditors think the company that managed the light rail project took Charlotte for a ride of its own, and it's largely the city's fault. But it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, and it's embarrassing for those of us to stand up here uh, and, and, have to, and have to relay. In this newly released report, auditors outlined multiple problems with the architecture and engineering consultants' labor and overhead rates, citing unnecessary costs of at least $1.6 million likely much more. That's a lot. In labor costs alone, the city paid almost twice as much as estimated, more than $20 million. Much of that due to construction delays, salary increases, and unforeseen circumstances. But auditors found city staff could have done more to control costs and prevent excess spending. They questioned three to six million dollars in charges. Everything from why the city didn't provide a field office for HNTB to why dozens of pay rate adjustments went unapproved by city staff. Auditors think HNTB now needs to reimburse the city at least roughly $300,000 for inappropriate payments. That's it? Okay. <laughs> the 9.3 mile light rail extension, which connects 7th Street Station to UNC Charlotte, opened in March 2018 to grand applause. Let's What's most ironic about the unnecessary expense of this project is the city built the light rail because it promised better mobility. The economic development will follow. Which in turn meant massive economic development. Turns out the $1 billion plus project comes at an even greater cost. It seems like we've uncovered a mistake. Much like the funding failure involving the Cross Charlotte Trail, Council Member Tarek Bakari says this, yet another mistake from a past administration, is a reminder the city needs to be better stewards of taxpayer money. The big thing I want is to make sure this never happens again. That was Nathan Morabito reporting. He also discovered the same company at the center of that audit has given $21,000 to council and mayoral campaigns since 2011. As recommended by the city, they are trying to recoup some of the necessary, unnecessary payments, rather, and improving oversight moving forward. So uh, no, no one from that, that board or the mayor's office is here to represent, but, it, you know, we're all talking about government here. So how do we avoid pitfalls like this in the future? You know, the key word there is audit. Uh, and um, I'm chair of the audit committee at, uh, at the county, and I've been on the audit committee for uh, since 2012. Uh, but it, this is important that we, we have to remember who's paying the bills here, and we have to be better stewards. And we can all, this should be a, a good learning thing for all bodies of government if the city has made mistakes like this. And, um, but again, let's not, let's, Let's take that information and all of us do better and um, really give more power to our audit departments and so that they can uncover these things. You know, at home, I mean, in my personal budget, we, we, we track expenses throughout the month. <laughs> so is there anybody tracking these kind of expenditures on a monthly basis, maybe even, you know, a, a quarterly basis? There should be. I assume there is. I hope there is. Let's hope there is. Well, yeah. you know, the, the audit is after the fact, and it's right. great that they did it, but more somebody needs to have more direct oversight up front to check these expenses as they're happening. And I say this as somebody who, look, I, I drive into Charlotte from outside of Charlotte all the time. You know, Charlotte's transportation grid needs to change, it needs to evolve, and light rail could be an important part of that, but and everything that is happening with overspending and things like that and failure to plan for the growth makes that less likely. In general, people who want economic growth prefer fixed rail over, um, you know, wheeled trolleys or things because most of the time economic development does happen, but you have to coordinate with your economic development folks. There needs to be a comprehensive plan so that they know what kind of development could go in the spots that it's going to go through and plan for growth that way because you're going to have to start going east-west otherwise by 2030 we're all going to have to be walking across the hoods of cars to and, get anywhere and as part of that plan they need somebody diligently watching the money like in Absolutely. my house it's my wife she right. diligently watches the money bill as a former mayor former state senator and a former partner at ernst and young one of the globally largest uh, independent uh, public accounting firms 
I'm going to give the elected officials a, a little bit of a break on this because it's not their responsibility at this level. This is staff. This is on staff. At a town level, county level, at the state, we have chief financial officers. This is on them. It's on their watch, and they have a fiduciary responsibility to manage the money. They do it on monthly financial statements that they get in a reviewing. Uh, internal agencies are responsible for the terms and conditions of the contracts and ensuring that they're in compliance and being met uh, to the T. Elected officials, that is not their responsibility or role. It's not, but but the, I, nobody knows who staff is. They only know the faces but, that, that are on TV but, running for office. I'll give you one example. Like at the state level, for 20 years, we did not require independent financial audits of any of the agencies. The bill I ran four years ago, and we just started. HHS hadn't been audited in 20 years. They couldn't account for a billion dollars. A billion dollars didn't know where it is because there was no oversight on the financials independently, a hand uh, shake removed from the day-to-day -day operations, if you will, and oversight. That needs to occur at every level in government. Uh, I would also say that elected officials, though, we need to be more proactive and we need to say we want to get updates on this. I mean, at the county, we do get updates on things. Uh, it, you know, even like now, we're getting updates on the reval. How is it coming? You know, how many cases every week? Uh, things that are solved, what are not solved. I mean, we do ask for that. And I, I do think that we have to be more aggressive. Uh, and I would say again, as I have, when you mentioned that when you worked with Ernst & Young, but I really think that uh, all bodies of government should do and assess and review uh, of their, of everything for um, just like the big corporations do, mm -hmm. because for the for them not to be able to find a billion dollars, that is yeah. inexcusable. So do heads roll on something like well, that? I mean, you know, if something like that happened here in my own company, I sure. wouldn't. if I was responsible, I wouldn't be here. Well, I'll, right. give, you an, I'll give you a head, uh, an exact example was Garrett Alexander in the tax assessor's office. The debacle that was created under 2011 right. cost him his job. Uh, I've seen it in other uh, people, the problems we had with the water shortage in Charlotte Water, it cost Doug Bean his job. Those are appropriate responses when you're falling behind. But where the elected officials do have a responsibility in tying uh, tax revenue and spending uh, as it's been applied is let's go back to the uh, transit system. I served on the Metropolitan Transit Commission for five years as the mayor. There was a commitment that we would raise a half cent and add a half cent sales tax for transit. We're paying that in the metropolitan right. areas with no solution. So why is that allowed to continue to send revenue for a solution that is never going to come? That's in, in, in an inappropriate uh, tax, and it's controlled by the elected officials. The, bu the problem with bureaucratic oversight runs like this from the, the town level all the way up. Elected officials generally, uh, you know, do what's called fire alarm oversight rather than police patrol. We want police patrol watching everything, but we only reward our elected officials when they come in, when there's a big fire to put out like this is going to be, and it changes the incentive structure. We want elected officials who properly delegate to the folks who have the day-to-day -day oversight responsibility and those folks need to have the power and authority to step up and say this is bad spending okay we're going to continue this conversation we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back